So you've read the title of this video guys. So you're either born of the flesh or you're born of the spirit. Now I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time. It's like the Lord has been telling me you need to make this video. You need to put this video out there. You need to speak to your ministry. You need to speak to your friends. You need to speak to your subscribers. And you just need to put it out and you just need to spread the knowledge, you know. As right now, I'm, I'm going through this myself in my own, you know, physical current situation in my, in my own life. And I know many others out there are going through the same thing. Because you know you're born of the spirit, but then you look at, you know, whether you are brothers and sisters or any other family members and you know they're born of the flesh. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to speak my mind and speak to you guys and tell you what I what I want to say to you because I've been wanting to speak to you for so long especially about this topic especially about this video so let's let's just get on with it right now. I'm reading from a text that I've received here recently and it's it's in detail so I'm just going to go for it and try and get through it as quick as possible and you know hopefully you guys can understand what I'm saying and what I mean. So it is of vital importance. I'll start from the beginning so it says born of the flesh or born of the spirit. It is of vital importance for us to know truth for if we do not know truth we won't recognize the lie nor will we know the difference between flesh and spirit and that the two are in opposition to each other instead of differentiating between the two we will try to improve the flesh zealously trying to make it look spiritual and alive we will be like the undertakers who work painstakingly in the effort to take to make a dead body look alive in John 3 Jesus was teaching Nicodemus a Pharisee and ruler in Israel on this subject the Pharisees were self-appointed watchdogs in Israel God had not commissioned them to set up their own laws and to force them on Israel they took this upon themselves because they considered that through their self-effort and works that they had become so righteous that they were justified in doing this Nick Jesus said to Nicodemus that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit the book of John chapter 3 verse 6 this is a simple statement this is a, this is a simple statement yet rich in meaning when we think of flesh we think of our physical body but in biblical language flesh refers to our nature uh, flesh refers to our natural mind and it has been passed on to us through adam's disobedience it is the mind we are born with it is always opposed to the spirit and under its rule we cannot do things that we please this is the mind of the flesh and it explains why our new year's resolutions are always broken all of man's philosophies are birthed in a natural mind so they are not spiritual for that mind is unable to birth spiritual thoughts in chapter 1 john in 1 john chapter 2 verse 16 john refers to his mind when he talks about the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life this lusting originates in our natural mind the mind that is that is influenced by our emotions circumstances and will this mind is ever present to tempt us to oppose god its thoughts are categorized as being either good or evil but they cannot become spiritual because they come from the wrong tree the tree of knowledge of good and evil it is important to realize that the good of that tree is also rooted in disobedience for Adam and Eve were clearly forbidden to eat of that tree spiritual thoughts have to come from the mind of Christ for it only has spiritual thoughts it cannot birth fleshly thoughts there is no crossover from one mind to the other the source of our thoughts determines whether they are of they are the flesh or of the spirit in the book of Romans chapter 7 verse 18 Paul said nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh in other words nothing good dwells in our natural mind 
this mind remains with us even after we become Christians and we receive the mind of Christ. However, it does not belong to the new creation man that we are in Christ. Paul referred to this when he said, For the good that I want the spiritual man that he is in Christ, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I am doing the very thing that I do not want, I am no longer the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me. But I see a different law in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin which is in my members. That's the book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 9, and chapter, chapter 7, verse 9, 19, 20, and 23. I'm reading this guys like bear with me you know forgive me if I'm stumbling my words you know I don't usually read and then make videos like that but I had I, I had to make some I will continue these verses tell us that we cannot overcome our sin nature by self-effort we remain prisoners of the law of sin regardless of all our effort we expend in trying to overcome the pride and lust of the flesh because we are not letting the Christ in us to do the overcoming but we are not left in a pit of despair. There is hope. Thanks be to God through Christ our Lord, Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 25 and in 1 Corinthians, verse, chapter 15, verse 57, he says, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God, the spiritual is greater and stronger than the natural. For Christ is in us, can overcome every adversary every adversary all our earthly all our earthly ideas of spiritual realities now have to be replaced by Christ and his understanding this includes all our earthly all our earthly ideas of Jesus they also have to be raised out of our earthly realization into a spiritual realization in 2 the book of Corinthians chapter 5 verse 16 it says even if we have known Christ according to the flesh Yet now we know him in this way no longer. We need to be able to discern between the physic the physic the visible physical body of Jesus that died on the cross and disappeared because it was temporary and the spiritual body of Christ. Notice that Paul never spoke of a spiritual body of Christ of Jesus. Christ meaning anointing or Messiah is the head and we are members of Christ's spiritual body. Only those who have been born of the spirit can be members of his spiritual body we cannot become members by self-effort and good works for we have to be baptized in the body of christ by the holy spirit since jesus since christ's body is a spiritual body it has to be he has to feed on spiritual food and drink truth and revelation and function in christ's spiritual understanding when christ is lifted up from being a human individual to many Membered corporate spiritual man, he is lifted up from the earth. Christ repeatedly referred to himself as the Son of Man. He is the corporate spiritual man, the new humanity. And we are members of his body. He mediates the things of God to us and we mediate the things of God to the world. It is important to know who we are after we are born again. Our new birth brings us into a spiritual dimension for we are born of the spirit our new being is a new creation to corinthians the book of corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 it has nothing to do with our past and it is invisible to the natural eye this new creation dwells within us we receive by we receive this by faith for we cannot see it since we have been born of the spirit the holy spirit now dwells in us just like just as he dwelt in Jesus, but not in the same measure. Jesus Christ had the Spirit without measure. But we only have the down payment of the fullness that is yet to come. Ephesians chapter, chapter 1 verse 13 and 14. Our body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. The temple of the tabernacle of Moses consisted of three parts. The outer court, the first holy place, and the holiest place where God dwelt. In like matter, we are body, outer court, soul, first holy place, and spirit, our innermost part. So the Holy Spirit dwells in the innermost part of our being. 
when Jesus said that he wanted his disciples to be in the same place he was John book of John verse 14 chapter 3 chapter 14 verse 3 he was still living on earth Jesus did not say that he wanted his disciples to be where he would be in the future he wanted them to be living in the same relationship of unity with the father and in the spirit as he lived this was to occur while they were living on planet earth at the same time this was impossible for this place of relationship in the spirit had yet had not yet been prepared but in jesus christ's death and resurrection and the outpouring of the holy spirit he prepared a place where we too can live in the same relationship of unity and intimacy with the father this abiding place is not a beautiful mansion up in heaven somewhere it is in christ this is where he wants us to live now at this present time we have to be lifted out of our earthy idea that christ has gone to prepare mansions in the sky for us the word mansions is a mistranslation and it is rightly translated and abode in verse 23 through christ's death resurrection and the pouring of the holy spirit christ has prepared an abiding place for us in himself when we understand that the anointing christ is in us we can grow in this anointing to illustrate this he said that he is the, vi the vine and we are the branches or maybe he means the wine and we are the branch i don't know he says vine when a branch is cut off it cannot receive the life of vine by abiding in the vine growth and fruit bearing vine bear, bro, growth and fruit bearing takes place we can only receive our life and sustenance from him by abiding by him, abiding in him religious religious city i don't know how to say that it says religious city the, the fig leaves symbolizing self-effort has taken the spiritual meaning out of the scriptures and has put everything into a natural realm jesus said that his words are spirit and life spiritual words have to be understood spiritually by lowering them in an into an into the natural realm we put them into the death realm natural concepts keep christ wrapped in a veil of flesh and they prevent us from seeing him spiritually our natural ideas of spiritual things cannot and our natural ideas of spiritual things corrupt the scriptures the scriptures declare that there are only two men adam and christ if there are only two men there cannot be anyone between adam and christ the first man adam is from the earth earthy the second man christ is from heaven 1 corinthians chapter 15 verse 47 in adam all die and in christ all are made all are made alive 1 corinthians chapter 15 verse 22 verse 15 chapter 15 verse 22 we are either in adam or in christ the adam man is earthy so all his thoughts of spiritual things are in the earthy natural realm natural thoughts about christ jesus make him a king in the future ruling over this world from the present jerusalem and it keeps his, its people in slavery galatians 4 galatians chapter 4 verse 25 the natural mind has polluted the scriptures with its natural thoughts of heaven and hell the bible the rapture the millennium etc because it cannot receive the things of the spirit spiritual concepts are foolishness to the natural mind and therefore spiritual realities are rejected the adam man wants earthly prosperity and has no idea of the riches that are ours in christ the adam man lives from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil so he's, const he's constantly choosing between what he considers to be good and what he considers to be evil he is oblivious to the fact that both good and evil and the evil of the, that tree are in the death realm of disobedience the christ man on the other hand wants spiritual prosperity his nourishment comes from the tree of life and there is nothing evil in that tree so he lives in obedience to the voice of the spirit not by choices man's choices are born in the desires of the flesh obedience is born in the desire of the spirit the spiritual man dwells in heaven the government of god even while he lives on planet earth in john in the book of john chapter 11 verse 25 jesus said i am the resurrection and the life since he is the resurrection he has to bring life and understanding to us he takes us out of our natural understanding of spiritual realities 
and gives us true spiritual understanding he resurrects us out of the death realm and brings us into life jesus came to release us from the prison of our natural mind from the natural conception of spiritual realities this is the good news of the gospel christ brings us into truth and life he transfers us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son the kingdom of this world has its roots in carnal thinking and that thinking opposes the spiritual realm since christ's kingdom is not of this world we have to enter his kingdom in order for him to become our king christ takes us out of our adamic consciousness and gives us his consciousness he takes us out of our false ideas of future physical grandeur and reveals that the power and glory of his overcoming christ is in us and it is ours for today if we are, if we are ignorant of the self-existence life that christ is within us we will be like an onward city open to all attacks of the enemy as long as we know jesus christ as a physical man and only understand the things he taught in the natural realm we will not see that his kingdom is a spiritual kingdom of spiritual people under god's under god's spiritual government everything that is born of the flesh is unable to enter god's kingdom everything in his kingdom is spiritual those who are born of the spirit and are seated with christ in heavenly places will grow in their perception of seeing things spiritually they realize that christ is the truth and that all truth is born of him he is always right they don't they don't function in choice but in obedience they realize that christ is their land of milk and honey and that spiritual riches are beyond comparison and that these riches already belong to them at this present time they understand that heaven is god's throne his government they see that the inhabitants of the new jerusalem are the overcomers the bride of christ and that the riches of the city symbolizes the divine nature that is in that is theirs in christ they realize that christ not doctrine is the truth they are not waiting to be raptured out of difficulties they know that christ is their strength to overcome all trials and difficulties in summing up we see that flesh does not inherit the kingdom of god all natural thinking of spiritual truth is fleshly thinking he may be dressed in sheep's clothing in order to deceive us but it is it is not of god in order to be freed from it we must have a love for truth this love for truth causes us to be willing to give up the traditions that are not rooted in Christ. It causes us to be willing to endure persecution from those Christians who are still living in a natural concept of heaven and hell, loving their fleshly desires and being satisfied with their religious zealousness and the good deeds that bring honor to them. We thank God for the victory that is ours in Christ. He is the source of all our needs. He conquered all the desires of the flesh. In him, there is no fleshly thinking, no natural desire and no soulish emotion. Christ alone can give us spiritual understanding and satisfy our deepest needs. He is our righteousness, our salvation, our wisdom, our redemption, our sanctification, our joy, our peace, and our love. He is our present and He is our future. He is everything and we are everything. He is everything we are and everything we need. Glory be to God. I, I thank God, I thank the Heavenly Father for allowing me to speak my mind, guys. Share that with you because I've been wanting to speak my mind and share this this message with you for so long. I hope you guys have understood me. I know, like, because I don't normally read text off a screen and I make videos like this, but this one it needs to be put out there for you guys to understand where I'm coming from because so many of you are going through this, like, you know, you're you're in the battle like me. You know, you you've got family members or who have you know in that in that war with the flesh. They're just like they only obey the stuff, the things of the flesh. They're of Adam. They're not of Christ. And you know you're born of either the flesh or the, or the spirit it happens only at birth you cannot change who you are and who you were born as to be i know i was born of the spirit from the day i was born because i've not been like everybody else and many others you know are realizing this now because the whole spiritual awakening and consciousness is happening all over the world globally but you can't change who you are and if you're born of the flesh you're born of the flesh it doesn't matter what you try to do even if you're baptized and you think you're saved it doesn't work like that you are born either of the flesh or of the spirit that's how to sum it up guys i hope you guys have enjoyed this video enjoyed my how can i say i hope you guys have enjoyed me talking and giving you my knowledge and giving you my wisdom like i said the censorship on 
YouTube and Facebook has already begun. I know you guys have seen it. You know, I only pray that the Lord protects me in this battle. You know, and I knew I knew this day would come and I knew this day would happen. But you know, I can only fight back as much as I can with the truth and with the Lord behind me. He's guiding me, and He's been wanting me to put this video out for from a long time. And today I said, you know what? I'm gonna put it out there today on Monday, March 12, 2018. Just about 12.43 p.m. local London time, guys. I had to do it. I know you guys have seen that dark object video. Like I said, if you want to think it's a hoax, it's a, if you believe it's a hoax, you believe it's a hoax. If you believe it's the truth, it's the, it's the truth, guys. Because I am not here to lie. I captured it as I saw it. I recorded it. But that's another video. For now, I just want you guys to just take, in, take on board what I've told you about being either born of the flesh or born of the spirit. So, for today and for now, I'm just going to say this has been... DU2K187 on YouTube, God Sunday Andrew on Facebook, telling you to take care, to stay safe, and God bless and amen, guys. Take care, stay safe, God bless and amen, guys. I love all of you that are sticking by me in this battle, you know. The ones that are sticking by me, I know you're born of the Spirit. I don't even have to question. I know where your loyalty stands. I know where you stand on the battlefield. I already know that you're born of the Spirit. I know you don't you don't worship the things of the flesh. I can already see it. I know it. I know when to use discernment. The Holy Spirit speaks for me right now, and He has, you know spoken for me today and i've shared this with you now and i hope you've taken it all on board so i'll just say take care stay safe god bless and amen guys stay tuned to my youtube channel stay tuned to my facebook profile despite the censorship despite them saying that i'm spamming everyone and despite them saying that you're spamming me back we will continue to fight back no matter what like i said they've let up the fire in me like i said when you poke a lion what happens now you know guys now you know.